All right, YouTube, it's time for the occult video 126 on auras and aura sensitivity. Now, of course, you probably have that one friend uh, that presumably likes crystals and incense and so forth uh, that claims to be able to see people's auras. And you have like Karelian photography, which claim to be able to actually uh, to know what color your aura was, how large it was, what its form took and so forth. Um, I'm a believer in the general sense that there are energies that permeate things that we haven't quantified. Um, there, there are all sorts of examples of weird phenomena in this world we can't quite understand. I choose to believe that science, over the span of a long period of time, if it applies itself to testing these things, probably can explain them. And then there's stuff that's total quackery. Uh, you know, like, uh, like telepathy in a generally held sense as in a deliberate sense is used by psychics and stuff that's it's bunk it, it doesn't actually exist um, you know some of the fortune telling apparatus it's easily explained as just uh, basically denoting coincidence and then forgetting about all of your failures when you're trying to read the future or something like that I do believe in synchronicity I do believe literally in sort of other otherworldly uh, entities or energies or spirits or whatever you'd like to call them. I do believe in some superstitious things. But auras, uh, no, I, I think there's a more rational explanation in the case that we're seeing anything at all. I think the rational explanation is that human sensory arrays are occasionally capable of syncing up are occasionally capable of seeing things that would otherwise be described as nonsense but aren't quite. The, the dream state is a good example. Somebody has a dream and it, it perfectly predicts something that happens the next day, something like that. I've heard plenty of anecdotal tales of that. I've had situations like that myself. What we're seeing there I don't think has anything to do with the occult strictly as, it's, uh, as it would be regarded as a religious or spiritual topic. I believe we're seeing science as yet not properly understood. And that's the case with much of the occult. Um, now you can choose to believe that that means it's not occultism or you can go the other way. It's like alchemy. In, in the alchemical process, you're talking about chemical processes. You're talking about the creation of colloidal gold or something along those lines. The, the philosopher's stone is nothing more than a chemical compound. At the time, though, it was seen as witchcraft. It was seen as sorcery. Now, of course, we quantify. In fact, we can uh, accomplish much of what it claimed, even the more otherworldly claims, like creating gold from other substances. Technically, it is possible. It's not profitable. It's not easy. You need a, a large hadron collider to smash some nickel atoms together or something like that, but it can be done, or you have to bombard a, a lump of some other material with high levels of radiation and lasers as they did, I believe, in the 1970s already in Japan. I think Leonard Nimoy talked about that on In Search Of. It actually worked. They could create gold. It just it took so much energy, you'd lose millions of dollars doing it. So good luck trying to be the next Rumpelstiltskin, I suppose. Um, the, the basic concept with auras is that there's simply an energy field that surrounds people. That I can accept you know obviously yeah any object that you can see around you is generating a sort of energetic field of sorts um, regardless of which theory of gravity you're using uh, that energy field does exist is interacted upon is capable of interacting upon other objects even something as mundane as static electricity is sort of an exchange between two bodies in this sort of energetic sense that being said though the idea that people through some innate psychic ability can see your aura, uh, I would be less on board with. Maybe, uh, incidentally, I don't think that a person would be capable of doing this on the regular. Uh, maybe some people are more in tune to some weird force than others, and, and okay, maybe I can accept that. Then there's the concept of, oh, your aura is a different color. Oh, your aura is red, your aura is blue. This aura over here is green. Uh, I'm, I'm going to assume that that's just man's innate tendency to take what would otherwise be a more mundane topic, spiritualize it, give it importance, and then attempt to categorize and classify it. Man has this uh, unfortunate tendency. I say magic is magic. I say the occult is the occult. I say there is no categorical system. Uh, there's no hierarchy of demons. There's simply some sort of entity that you haven't fully described. 
there's no good or bad. There's no black, white, and gray magic. It's just all magic, stuff like that. Uh, intent only matters within the human realm. If, if the human realm's not involved, there'd be no reason to objectively say something was good or bad. Likewise with ours, I, I definitely don't believe in the concept of differentiating people's ours. I think what you're seeing is that somebody who is emotionally in tune, who is empathic in a general sense, is capable of reading a person's emotions well enough without significant interaction to say this person is is more angry, that person's more sexual, this person's happy-go-lucky, and they're projecting it upon a categorical system which is prescribed for them to use to describe those individuals in those terms. I think that's generally what you're seeing there. That being said, uh, it's still interesting, like Karelian photography, okay, yeah, you got a picture of yourself with a glowing sort of aura around you. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's quackery. You paid like two bucks for a photograph to be taken, a spirit photo. Okay, that's fine. It's just like uh, when Lincoln uh, lost all his kids and, and his wife went fucking nuts and she had all these spirit photographs taken and they're like, oh yeah, your children are still around you. Look at this at, at the time because photography was still relatively new. They're like, oh, crap, there are fucking spirits around this woman. This is weird. It's like ghosts or something. Of course, now we realize it's just clever fakery. It's just a smudge on the lens or or an overlapped photo that's blurred out enough so you can't make out the facial features or something like that. And people see what they want to see. Um, science and technology and the occult have always been twain. They always will be, by the way, to the point where you can go on the internet You'll find people doing like, oh, demon generator or something like that. Use the online Ouija board, the online tarot, the online scrying mirror, stuff like that. And it's always going to be that way. It's just uh, the way that human beings happen to work on a spiritual level. Now, I don't believe in reading auras. I don't believe in differentiating them. But I am a believer in the general concept of energy fields surrounding us because it's scientifically not just plausible, but almost... Uh, a certainty that that actually does happen. Look at the, I mean, look, I'm surrounded by electronic stuff. It's generating electrical fields of various sorts. It is. Um, it's just the way that things are. There's no reason that my body wouldn't be generating some sort of weird charge on a general basis. And we can uh, put somebody in an MRI or whatever and look into their head and see all the weird shit that's going on. You can see electrical impulses in their head. That's the way that the human body operates, it's through an electrochemical gradient of sorts. Um, that's what constitutes your actual mental faculties, more or less. So to say that uh, we don't have some sort of field going on, especially around our head, which is, you know, like a picture of Jesus or whatever with a halo, it's basically you could take it to mean the same thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, is it visible? Now, I, when I look at people, I don't see an R, I just see the person's body. If there's somebody who literally sees like a, an energetic outline around that person, not in your mind's eye, I mean literally with your waking eyes, you are physically looking at them and you're seeing colors shooting out of their head or something. Okay, maybe that's anecdotal evidence of some psychic phenomenon. It might also be evidence that you're, you have uh, some sort of mental difficulty going, like maybe you're pre-schizophrenic or something like that. I don't know. It's always possible. Um, I'm not going to try to tar them all with the same brush. Maybe both are at play. Who knows? I, and I don't see these things, so I can't say as an anecdote, oh, yeah, I see energy fields all the time with my waking eyes or something like that. I generally don't believe... When, when people give me anecdotes, if they're plausible, I'm more accepting of them. If they sound implausible, I try to think about it and see, is there something I'm missing here that could lead it to be plausible? Some situation in which this could be rationalized or not rationalized but i could come around to the acceptance of the basic concept behind it oh i saw a ghost well yeah i can accept that i don't have to say well yes it was a disembodied spirit but i can accept it it's plausible that you saw something that you construed as a ghost maybe you did see a spirit of the dead maybe you saw some replaying energy that just happens to be reverberating throughout time and will slowly dissipate over a hundred years i don't know um, as far as the ability to see energy outlines, though, that would involve, if you're seeing it with your waking eyes, it would involve it giving off light. It would involve it actually uh, giving off something that can be sensed with the eyes as a biological thing. 
So I would generally reject the notion because if that's happening, other people, I would assume with their eyes that are functioning the same, unless you're rendering it to the strictly biological, would be seeing the same thing. So if you're claiming to literally physically see these, not with the mind's eye again, uh, then I would generally reject uh, that notion. So there's a little bit about auras. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware of the fact that we give off energy. I'm receptive to that. But as far as classifying it and seeing it and so forth, manipulating it, uh, yeah, I'm not exactly on board. I think some of that might be fluff bunny stuff. That's about all. Peace out.